I'm Barb Wilson with Westchester Township Parks, and we're here today with Laja Sparta, um, a businessman from uh, Fairfield now, but he is originally born in Czechoslovakia, and he is sharing with us memories of listening to the Voice of America broadcasts as a young boy in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> I don't know. Just, <laughs> you want to tell me who else is at the round right. table, too? We have uh, Charlie Stinger. S T I N G E R. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were the chief engineer, right? I was the plant supervisor. Plant supervisor here. When at I the retired. Bethany Station retired. And we have, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, Charlie, skip back this for a Martin second. Reese. That's all right. I just want to see you for a second. The rest of the interview we're going to spend over here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Herb Beerman, friend of. Uh, I'm in the amateur club, and uh, we, I ran into this gentleman, and I thought this would be extremely interesting for the Voice of America station. Laja Smarta. Well, I'm Laja Smarta from, <laughs> from Fairfield now. <laughs> Laja, you were telling us that your, your father was a police officer. Right. And so he was able to have a radio. Is that the case? He no, no. He, 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 no, this was radio. illegal for anybody to have a radio what can listen German or any kind of broadcasting, you know, you, everybody have radio, most people have radio at home, mm -hmm. but uh, this was illegal to listen to the stations, what basically uh, in town, uh, this building where people live, was people was afraid, for reason this is uh, one neighbor sometimes spying to another or, you know, checking what going on, and people was afraid to listen radio in, in Prague, in, in uh, most times these people have to truly know who can hear you or what, what's going on. What uh, my dad's friends always try to uh, uh, listen and sharing basically messages what I hear this and I hear this and my dad and friends always uh, like to hear on own ears you know what basically this is one his friend built this radio for uh, uh, basically from the stolen uh, tubes what was uh, made in Czech company for uh, the German military, and uh, this everybody was afraid to basically use this radio during World War II for, uh, you know, German police and include Czech people. You know, these people was basically collaborate with Germans, and sometimes if you want to prove your own lifestyle, he basically turned these people in, you know, and he know, I, I know this was crime. Somebody listen radio, you must have was prosecuted very hard. Some people end it in concentration camps, you know, just for listening radio. But uh, this basically, this point, my dad and his friends, what I say before World War II, built these cabins, what uh, was basically uh, just small cabin for camping type. And this this cabin lately is slowly growing bigger size. But uh, my dad with his friends basically try to find it a uh, location for this radio where all can come go together and nobody basically take this radio in and this place don't have any electricity. This was just a cabin what used kerosene kerosene light and basically most time don't have heat, you know, there's no no stove for this time thing. What uh, most time this guy just make a little small, you know, uh, these people make from drum heater, you know, put piece of wood and heat and and camp stay in this place. And these people put this radio in between walls. And uh, this radio was uh, uh, hidden, you know, completely behind these walls and was operated with nail, what you put in, in a wall, and have a second nail a few inches away. And you just make this nail square and you turn it, and you can change station and have volume in the other location too. And. Uh, this was basically battery operated, what uh, most time this was technical, what I hear from my dad, this first transistor radio was coming in 60 and this was big technical, you know, magic, you know, where basically nobody suspect these people have radio in this kind of place and listen, you know, foreign station, you know, no Voice of America or Free Europe, you know, and uh, this was only source basic information what these people have. and. Uh, these uh, houses were searched most time during the uh, end in World War II. The Germans basically tried to... See, this, this was so many, you know, how say, 
messages. People say, I don't know, Russians come in and U.S. come in, you know, and uh, Second Front start, you know, and this type of thing. These people don't know. This uh, German propaganda basically misinformed these people so bad what this, you know, people would live in this but was truly desperate for any kind of information what basically found what can go and go on and how protect family basically and this, so this is what my dad uh, was uh, organized in this kind of small group what he he never talked too much about it but he this was he tried to organize opposition type you know uh, basically everybody feel this maybe war be, can be over and these people try to speed it up, this process with uh, internal, a little bit, how say, guerrilla war all times today. And sabotage, basically, most of these guys, what he was involved, tried to sabotage production in Prague, you know, and, this, and these people try to organize. Uh, but this is what I just hear from him, from, mm -hmm. you know, the same kid talk about after war and this, you know. I never too much know too many details about it, but I know a few friends, what he had very, very close friends, what he was in concentration camp, you know, and this, and he escaped from concentration camp, and and uh, basically to, sometimes this, my dad talk during Cold War, these guys were still together and talk about World War two times, you know, and this, and uh, some of these guys uh, uh, emigrate to, you know, in different places in Canada, if you in Canada, and, and uh, uh, this, I think this was an uh, exist company in uh, Czechoslovakia, what was, what was named BATA, you know, B-A-T-A, -A. this was shoes company, mm -hmm. and this company was very big in South America, in uh, basically in United States, Germany, and this, and this owner, this company, this company still exists today, now again, you know, but uh, this my relative basically work. He was type main secretary type in this, and my dad was involved with this guy to help this guy, these people escape from country in 1945, or, you know, for, between 45 and 48. And this this is basically Voice of America. Basically, was for him and for these people part basically know what going on, you know what going on in the rest world, you know. And this is why he put so much effort to listen to this radio and hiding this radio. And I remember the same, you know, more I remember my personal was more from this Hungarian time, but uh, Hungary was basically to, in this uh, revolution part, and basically sit, and he always, uh, these people play cards, you know, this base, these people hitting this action way, this sit in this uh, Saturday night or Friday night and uh, play cards, you know, have bottle wine and play cards, and these guys exactly no time. And one go outside, and the rest just go in this radio and turn it, you know. And, and this was uh, very difficult sometimes. But what I say, sometimes this guy try to listen all night and never get nothing from it, <laughs> you know. And have to do next week and try again, you know. And this, and uh, this uh, uh, house was very hard. This, this point transportation was so hard. You no, know, there's no gasoline for go car. No, my dad had motorcycle. What? Sometimes he go, he most time take bike and go to the mouse in weekend house and come back, you know. And most time you can use train. And this train was from park and you know this most time was used only for weekend, you know. As, yes, weekend as a as a young boy, do you remember your father and his friends listening to the to the Voice of America and having great faith in what they were listening to? I mean, well, was this was uh, they... see, my dad always, uh, you know, he he. Uh, a lot of people on uh, World War II basically ended, and Prague was liberated with Russian military. And uh, American military ended in Plzeň, this camp, city what was maybe, I don't know, 80 kilometers or 90 kilometers from Prague. And uh, this time these people don't have any idea of what happened next, you know, in this. And uh, this basically this uh, government coming, you know, from, from England, and this uh, try to establish basically a uh, new system, but uh, till 1948, this was a little bit type chaotic time, but basically nobody basically truly was in charge. Uh, this, uh, uh, this was this agreement what was basically between uh, American and Russian government, how to divide it, Europe, you know, Germany and this. At this point, this, uh, this 
regular people was completely in blind spot, you know, to regular citizens. And these people basically have always hope. Uh, most people what I know when I grow up was prayed in communism for reason this uh, these people already learn and have experience what can happen you know, what can people can get in charge. You know, this was a uh, most um, uh, very opposition against uh, you know system what was before. See communism exists in Czechoslovakia, you know, Communist Party exists before World War Two. And uh, at this point my dad is was in police system and he know for this involved this kind of people or what, what these people are trying to do. This was most type uh, everybody reg with regular common sense or you know people who try to live normal was very paranoid about it. And these people uh, regular people try to stop it. But uh, Average person in Czechoslovakia have little bit tendency to sympathizing for reason this is Russian was liberated, and this point these people try to, you know, what can size people take and this and this uh, uh, media was very, you know, communist media at this point was under co communist control. What basically these people can easily manipulate this, confusing people to this this direction, this direction, and uh, this. Uh, how say 1948? These people say revolution in Prague. This was basically what uh, communist takes over. This was a big disappointment for regular people or business owners. But these people was uh, how say industry was destroyed. You know, World War II basically. This was just starting everything. But nobody have any power, control, money, or influencing government. And only influence what was Russian would have guns. This was <laughs> only this nobody this German take guns from people and regular people don't have any just have bare, bare hands, you know, to just try to do and try to raise voice what nobody listen listen anyway. What uh, and Russian take over control, put this uh, President Gottwald in charge and he immediately uh, set up a strong military and uh, militia type. But this not their militia was the same in here, this was a union militia type which was uh, organized in uh, factories. And this uh, factory worker basically was, if you was a member of the Communist Party, you, was, you get uniform and you get guns, and you just protecting the Communist Party from internal problems or from the regular public. And these people basically control these things very, very well, with strong power, and the regular people was basically put out in, uh, how say, any kind of, there's no party, no elections, basically. This, this, these people don't have any chance to change government. And this, all, these people always try and were hoping something coming from somewhere, from outside, you know. And uh, during this uh, East Germany conflict, you know, and later, uh, or uh, Hungarian conflict and this, and Germans have own, con uh, you know, East Germany have some trying for put this uh, uh, communism way, but everybody looking for some something maybe can happen and these people truly uh, try to, I don't know, organize some little bit uh, organization will basically try to establish some contact with Western world and try to basically reaching for help or reaching for information and this. And But for general public, this was still illegal to any kind of contact with Western people was prosecuted for just for sympathizing. I remember this uh, uh, United States uh, putting flyers, this overnight uh, aeroplane flying, and these people uh, put flyers, little pamphlet type, and parachute cigarette, and uh, Czech people say name, this was UNRWA food, you know, I don't know, this was uh, basically uh, green box with canned food, chocolate, mm -hmm. and different things, and these people throwing these things on, on in this kind of areas, and, I was remember, I remember a little kid, and my always dad tell me bring this flyer in for reason. Most time was uh, timing and frequency for radios, and you can basically see this flyer and go and listen radio in the right time, you know, and this. And uh, this uh, food, I remember chocolate always was hot, you know, hot chocolate, but lots of salmon grenade, or you know, and this, this have a little can, and you have to open, and this have a little <laughs> rope, and you have to light up, and this thing burn in the middle. You know, mm -hmm. and open, and this was hot chocolate. In. But a lot of people uh, check media, put in, uh, oh, this is basically explosive, and 
poisoned, you cannot eat it, you know, and this, and you cannot use it. And warning every every people, cigarettes is poisoned, you know, and this, and this type of thing. This is what my dad, in this, uh, you see, most people at this point never go too much from Prague and people live in villages and this. But my parents basically try to take me and my sister on this weekend cabin where basically these guys come together and play volleyballs on the weekend. And, this. and me and another kids always walking through trees, you know, and try to find it uh, little parachutes, you know, and this what was hanging this type thing and flyers, you know, flyers always was all over, you know, and this and uh, th this was, you know, my childhood, no member about this type things, you know, and this. But uh, this is what he, he always, I don't know, I remember a colleague this uh, flyers, but this was, uh, he have to always burn it. After he read it, he have to burn it for reason. If somebody be able to find it, you have flyer in, in your position. You can go in jail, you know, and this. My dad was jailed a few times, but uh, during, you know, uh, probably from 1948 till 1955, he was a few times in jail, but he was always later let go for nobody can prove it, you know. Mm -hmm. See, he was very, I think say, smart policeman before, and he know how police this time work, and new policemen, what was established with, uh, you know, communist government was basically just regular guys who tried to be policemen with no system, no education, basically, in, in this kind of things, and he, he was capable to basically not to survive. And, but he had a hard time, basically. He, uh, he was a lawyer, you know, and this, but he uh, cannot work with more than three people. But any kind of opera, any kind of job what he get, this, uh, these people were so scared to he be of influence on other workers. Well, basically, he can be only only in places where there's more than, you know, less than three people. Mm -hmm. And he work on construction. He this I don't know you, you probably most time uh, this uh, broadcasting was involved in in Prague was built bridge, and say this was a intelligent bridge. For reason every worker was minimum doctor or lawyer. <laughs> you know, and this, this was, uh, see, this is uh, in in 48 and after this, uh, how say, uh, union people decide to this, everybody who have education, this uh, dangers for for country. Well, these people was truly fired and put in, basically in a labor camp type, what was not completely prisoner camp, but this was the same, in, I can say, manpower sounds very nice for this. You just put in these people take bus and pick it up some people and using for construction somewhere. And these people build this huge bridge. What was built for a long time, what was still nonsense bridge today. This nobody knows this bridge basically doesn't go anywhere, you know, and doesn't help in anything, but still this in Prague. But these people do this and my dad have uh, he was hit with a uh, very piece heavy iron, what hit his ribs and destroy his toe, you know, and this and he gets some disability from this. But uh, he basically was, uh, uh, you see, in, in probably 65, from 68, this Czech government get a little bit more loose. You know, this was this, uh, I don't know if you remember, 1968, you know, R Russian army in again. But this few years before, well, basically from 67 or 66, this government started a little bit loosened up. and start basically uh, privatize a little bit, open a little bit border, uh, visitors from uh, Western Europe can come. And at this point, basically, this, uh, my dad was uh, recognized and he can go back to in law practice and he start working in commercial law and basically start back do what he can do, you know, in this. But basically, this, this stopped in 1967, basically. He, he was, but this thing was short-lived, you know. <laughs> <laughs> This was only for a few, you know, few, a few years, you know, and everything started again, you know. And uh, but uh, this was this time would he go to this type thing? But yeah, what I say, I tell, I tell him this radio was part of my life basically this time, and some way I can s probably form my. See, I uh, I was young, and I always try to be live in Czechoslovakia. I remember. All friends, you know, you play with kids for and say I'm American. I'm. I was always Czech guy. I never. I was. I always want to stay home, you know, and this and and, and live way what 
you always dream it or something to send a kid. But I probably, in, in, uh, after my dad died, 1974, I gave up basically to, you know, he, he died 77, you know, in this. But my sister emigrated, see, she came in 1967 in the United States. My brother-in-law was professor in Prague. And this time what uh, he have, uh, you know, the system was loosened up. He had some uh, opportunity to work in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Detroit just summer study for two, two months. But uh, he came with basically my, my sister and little boy and the uh, Russian army invade Czechoslovakia and everybody tell him, don't come back, you don't have job anyway, you know, and this and this is very bad, nobody know what happened. And he basically applied for uh, political asylum and he stayed here. Mm -hmm. But from this time I never see my sister for 13 years. You know, and this, and I live with my pa parents this time. It was both life in Prague, and my dad basically later he had stroke and get a, a physical problem, and he was on wheelchair. But I basically tried to care, to stay with him basically. But I resist more and more, and I see this. You know, you young, you never know. But this is just you live the same and kid, and how you get older and older, you understand what's going on and what normal people live and the system where it's, where it's going, can you see that basically you wasting your life. But I always was type freedom fighter, how I can say. And I always hope this thing, I can change something and this and and do something more. But after I slowly get older and older, I basically sometimes see this is no way to, you know, this is somewhere, there's no way to fight yourself or with few people against this kind of machinery for these people have this. Russia. And I think this is biggest problem doesn't was Russian people. This was own people in Czechoslovakia. This was so many opportunists for basically seek and get easy ride with no education, with no, no, uh, this was basically own stupidity. And these people truly uh, start control you and never, never let any election or never, see I work in companies but basically uh, biggest uh, leaders in this company was people with political education. But these people run technical company. These people don't have any technical background. These people don't have any, and it's no logic. No, these people don't get rewarded. If some, some people do something right, this doesn't was right. You know, most people try to fake work and go work on evening in, in home and build own houses and this, but people go relax to go work for reason this was completely, the system was upside down for mm -hmm. any kind of logic, you know. And I basically slowly see this is not only personal issue, but stay basically to, and I was late, uh, I, I ski for Czechoslovakian ski team. And during this time, I get opportunity to see different places. And uh, at some point you start saying, you know, this is no, you know, you can see how rest war going, and this thing go basically completely backwards. Mm -hmm. And you, you uh, see how some people try to, uh, I'll give you an example, I work for a company and I want to go in college and for political reason I can. And these people tell me, you cannot go in college, this, uh, our company don't need any engineers. I don't have any, you know, and I don't need it. These people have enough smart people, this will be fine if you work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you say, no, this, somebody can tell me I cannot go learn something, you know, and, and you start feel so control, so so manipulated, you you just uh, you just go for s personal freedom basically, and you f this is sm too many small details, mm -hmm. but basically later change you attitude and all my how I say freedom fighting to I give up on this basically I almost gave up on people not on country but I give up on people what live in, and I remember this you know this is some kind of details you. I go ski in Austria on, on racing and come back and these people to out, you save some money to basically you can uh, buy something or these people basically strip you naked, you know, to research every detail, every magazine, you know, and these people hold it, uh, me on a border, for reason I have phone number and this phone number don't have any name and custom people type, you know, what was it, basically don't let you to, 
you know, these people confiscated little tiny phone books. What you have, just you write somebody somewhere, you meet somebody, write his phone number and this, and this every, these people go every, every, uh, every, every detail. And you start to say, this is not living, these things, you know, you, you cannot go on and on with this type of thing. And you, you cross this border and you see smile people, you know, and people live and travel shopping, you know, and live normal life. And I remember I always, see, I have to go back this time to back to Czechoslovakia. My dad was on wheelchair and I basically, uh, this was a tough time. You always want to go. My parents tell me, go, never come back. But these people don't have just all and don't have anybody around. But I always dri drive back and look and everything was black, dark, and you know, you cross Western board and everything was clean, mm -hmm. everything was bright, everything was basically uh, it's completely the same and you step in mind or something, you know, in nasty, dirty place, you know, and you go and say, I have to go back, you know, and, and uh, I can tell you most this uh, friends what I ski in, in Czech ski team is by nobody stay in Czechoslovakia. S slowly last 30 years everybody was gone basically to, you know. And, uh, now you talk about your travels helping you kind of form these opinions or right. this is how comparisons you that make you do that. Did, did Voice of America broadcast have any impact over that hearing news? Well this was uh, Voice of America have uh, you know in, in Czech people maybe I don't know, he probably, this guy's member, uh, these people know the Radio Moscow, and if you hear this music or hear news and this, these people form you with, uh, how say music, what was uh, just uh, war songs, you know, or uh, how say political song type, built country or type, I don't know. I, I don't know how to translate to in English. This, this basically, this is this kind of uh, culture revolution never exists anywhere. You know, maybe in China and Russia and the, but uh, exists in, in Czechoslovakia. And these people basically uh, generate type uh, uh, pioneer organization was was a youth organization or later uh, uh, you know teenage organization. This was very strong politically and culturally organized and. You don't want to hear it, you know. If you, if you, if if you see how these things was different for what I grew up with my parents and this, and you start understand what these people try to do, this was part brainwashing kids from kindergarten. Basically, these people start truly in in four years old kids and starting very hard. And some people who don't have this background, maybe what I have, it's easy fall for this. And these people, some point later, find it and change it. But I was maybe lucky. I found it in a small age. And Voice of America, I can say, was one part for me and my parents on weekend listen and include music. You know, include. I remember these people uh, have a radio show what doesn't was jamming this time, and and play music. And you can write postcard, and you just put you know uh, first name. You know. Raja from Prague, like my, I don't know, this song, I don't know, I write one time for Louis Armstrong, you know, and this. And, and uh, Fitzgerald lady, what name? I don't know, Fitzgerald lady sings, this was uh, Louis Armstrong. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> Diane? No. I know who you mean. This was in the 50s and 60s, you know, and this, I, I'm bad on music. I'm bad on music today. Lola, Fitzgerald. Lola Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. Lola or something? Ella Fitzgerald. Ella, Ella. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. And this was popular, popular, you know, and, and some this kind of music, and I write this kind of song, you know, and this, and uh, Paul Robson, or? Yeah. Right, he was a super player or something, and he, this kind of music was uh, for us, you know, part Western world. And I sent this postcard, I don't know if people ever put this with my name, you know, <laughs> but uh, this thing, you know, to, these people did it, and, and this was part of opposition culture, culture revolution. This was still some contact, what you can get. See, in Prague, doesn't was so bad for reason. This, uh, uh, you have to realize this. Most maybe my parents was capable to speak Czech and German. My generation don't. I have to speak in school Russian. You know what? Uh, my parents were still capable maybe listen to German news on radio, and get some. Uh, but for me, maybe this was only 
Russian language and and Czech news. And at uh, this point, I uh, don't have later in this uh, school time and days, this culture-wise was only music what I can get from Radio Luxembourg, you know, uh, Free Europe and Voice of America. This was uh, me and my friends always go on camping trip or canyoning trip and later with transistor radio still listen to these three stations, you know, and this was only access to get a uh, record or, or, you know, music what was from Western world or between this line was in use too, you know, and uh, but uh, if you was uh, exposed only uh, this Russian music or Czech music, what uh, Czech music in later in, in 60 try to translate American song and use uh, Czech singers and try to do it. And I have few records home here, and if I play to my daughters, this in my wife, everybody laughing, you know. And this is you know, this is this was records what I bring. My mother one time bring just for fun, and I keep it just for memorabilia, you know. And, but this was this was this was big part basically in my you know. I can you know you look. This time I don't know it. I was a young, young person, but today if I look back, this this was one part how you slowly grow up and create you. I don't know outlook on world and outlook on life. You know. Well, it sounds like your parents were very progressive, really. And well, I can say this. Uh, you see, my my mother worked before she worked for this political party, and she uh, meet my my father, and uh, she worked for Red Cross for a long time during World War II, you know, and this, and after World War II, she was lawyer also, but uh, she uh, uh, cannot, basically my dad was between jails and, and both lives basically turned upside down, but she started being a school teacher and basically uh, spent time with me, she can take me in school and from, you know, see this life was so, uh, I don't know how you say, ticket for food tickets, for Rations, I don't know. Like, Ration yeah. stamps, right? And this is what I I grew up on. This, you know, this was still in probably '55. You know, have uh, amount of sugar, amount of food, you know, and and this was very very hard for parents basically provide for, you know, me and my sister minimum what, and all this. Uh, but these people don't, you know, don't give up basically, and still, this is what I say. My dad built this weekend cabin, you know. And try to put us out in this environment. Uh, you see, uh, Czech, uh, Czech, Czechoslovakian school uh, created this uh, summer camp for kids or weekend camp. But basically, these people truly don't want these kids. These kids have to be brainwashed from little age. But basically, these people truly organize own thing. And parents fighting this way to remove us from these things and put us in this own friends, you know, and try to basically, you grow up with people with different values and this, this was some rebellion attitude against this uh, communism, what these parents try to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, this time I don't, I don't see this, you know, but uh, I literally realize what all these people try to do to basically to, you know, create your mind and mindset, you know, and, but this was what I say, Radio America was only culture what I can get this time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Charlie, did you have any questions or you want to ask? Yes, I'd like to know about your early education under the communist rule. Uh, well, everything started, uh, I it out. you go in regular school and after you uh, finish your basic education, you have to apply for to be accepted in school. And you can apply this time for anything what you want. And if you pass test, you you can be you know, accepted, but these people have, uh, how say, a labor office, and this labor office have political department and uh, city department, and city decide to mo make quotas, and say maybe city need maybe 100 bricklayers, 100 welders, 100, I don't know, uh, any kind of workers, basically, to depends what this city needed. And these people have to meet these quotas. But if you apply for any kind of school or you try to do, you end it, uh, these people say, you cannot go, you have to meet these quotas. But basically, most of them was way, these people look on, on your parents' background record. And if you have, this time, maybe parents would have to college education, 
I get quota to be a horse keeper or bricklayer. This was only things what I can go after after high school. And uh, uh, this uh, people don't give you permission to no way to go around it. Basically, you was this uh, labor department. This application it was only source what you can go through. What uh, my parents tried this time uh, holding me home for one year and ask for apprenticeship to be in uh, work in utility of Prague. What my dad this time was a truck driver, and this was company what uh, servicing uh, heat and steam supply for capital city, and he a few friends what. But I see he built this bridge with these guys in 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 fifties. But still work for this company, and he uh, uh, have friend. What basically said, no, I can put him in department, where it be electrical maintenance helper type, and he can start here, and he can through company apply for school. And I go and be helper in this plant, and basically first few months I start go in a night school. This, uh, this was this school was generated for uh, how say older people would try to go in uh, this was prep for college or something but this through this company he bypassed it this way you know and I start basically go in this uh, uh, school and uh, this point I you know get, take these classes and next year I continue to do not one more night one more year night school and uh, I before mentioned I was on a uh, ski, you know, and, and uh, my dad was a good athlete and a lot of friends basically from his young childhood well basically this uh, well, have a lot of people would stay in this uh, this this city was uh, Prague was basically only source for education in Czechoslovakia. This was uh, one more city was Brno with a few small colleges this time but uh, most uh, kids would go try to go in college have to go in Prague. But he still have some people what he know and basically through back door I get in, in, in technical college. But this thing doesn't work too for long. This uh, military decided to draft me in in uh, uh, this was basically nineteen sixty five, draft me and put me in boot camp and from boot camp I go in military academy where I was uh, I was trained to be uh, basically commander on missile launcher. And, but this was the uh, only advantage this thing had. This was high technology, what you never exposed. Second time you can finish your degree in this military a academy, basically. And you are basically finished this school. To, I started completely complicated way and ended complicated too. But uh, I basically finished finished this school. But I have to serve for three years in military. And after I come back from military, I go back to. In, Company, what I work in this utility of Prague, mm -hmm. what I work in power plants, you know. But normally, my uh, the same. My story here, one more, um, was basically I never can, I cannot go in school, officially. But uh, my sister has the same story. She finished her school, and she go to learn to be cook. And this was school for. Uh, how say uh, mass production cooking? This was these people have a uh, special type. Uh, it doesn't was hotel type system. This was just uh, factory uh, cafeteria production food. And these people have a uh, four year school for this. And she go in the school. She graduate in the school, and she start work for a company with cooking for the food. But uh, this point she start night school and law school. And uh, this was very uh, steep way, but uh, my dad, what I say, he have, he was lawyer, and most some these law professors and this, what is his classmates, you know, what he some way he find it to put her in this night school, you know, and she, this for us, for me and my sister cannot go in daily day school. This was see, night school was, you know, I tell friends, I say, I start night school with four, uh, forty people. And only seven people graduate, you know, in this. And uh, my sister was the same thing, you know. I think she started with 50 people, and I think it's three only graduate, you know, in this, in, in this night school. This was basically you straight from work. This was everyday school. And 
uh, I remember I still have letter home after I immigrated here these people sent me I was put in jail for 15 years you know to in this out in presence basically to and uh, uh, this, this type uh, you know about this schools and this this I have some notes what my fa wife found it about uh, uh, so I, I apply for school and our company what I work on is uh, they turn me down basically just don't need it to go in school and uh, my problem was in, if you need test in school you can study at night but test is professor do only during daytime this company give you permission to go make tests these people if you unpay one day but I cannot go ask my company for unpaid day but I always try to I don't know ask these professors to I just need maybe early morning or late evening you know and and uh, this was very strange these people do this you know these people try to arrange this uh, schedule to to basically he wait for me in school I'm maybe 5 30 yeah. and, and make test you know and this was only reason what if you put so much effort to to go through somewhere these people some people not all uh, try to helping you too you know and uh, this was how this Czech people sometimes I cannot say all was bad this was a lot of nice and smart people who try to beat the system and the reason only why these people did it is people know this company does let them to go out you know and uh, this was this was goofy stories you know <laughs> <laughs> but this is you know I never think somebody be ever think about it <laughs> Yeah, this is this is how you know our life was created basically. Did you say something about when you first came over when you came over here, you could only carry a, a well, few yeah, things is, and a few dollars? You see I have uh, uh way I will come here, this doesn't was so easy to, you know, and this and uh, everybody try I don't know, every immigrant have own story how escape from country or get out, you know, and this and I know some people what was uh, lay under bus and hold, you know, create the extra fuel tank and, you know, I know one guy in Cleveland, he, he worked in bus uh, repair station and he make fake fuel tank under bus and he install in this, in this tank and after this, you know, this bus go out in country, he climb in and get out, you know, and, it, but uh, I have a story, I have a, I was a coach on ski team. And I have student what uh, his father was basically work for uh, passport department. And in Czechoslovakia you have passport, there's no problem, but you can go only in Bulgaria, Romania, Russia, uh, you know, on Eastern Black Country. And if you want to exit Czechoslovakia, you have to need exiting visa for Czech government, from Czech government. And this exiting visa was basically a piece of paper what Look, this was green and people say green card, but this is not green card here. You know, this was just piece of paper.